So far, we have learned about a variety of data types. While the focus of these lessons has been the C programming language, I want to emphasize that these lessons are applicable in every programming language. Fundamentally, we learned that every number, as well as every character of text, is encoded in binary in a certain way and then stored in memory. We learned that you can specify exactly what type of format you wish to use with certain keywords, such as signed or float. We learned in a previous lesson that the number of bits you have available for a number determines how big of a number you can have. For example, if you are limited to three bits, you could never have a number greater than seven. Each data type has a set size in bits. This also means that each data type has a maximum number it can hold. If you are using a sign bit, then there will be a maximum positive number and a maximum negative number it can hold. Figuring this out is actually quite simple. There are three possible cases to consider. The three possible cases to consider are unsigned, signed, or float. In this lesson, we will be looking only at unsigned data. If a data type is unsigned, that means that it will only be positive numbers. This is easiest because figuring out the maximum size is simply 2 to the power of the number of bits and then subtract 1. All right, so let me explain why this is. It might seem complicated at first, but it's actually extremely simple. So if you have three bits, the maximum value you can store is seven. Why is that? Well, because with three bits, there are eight total possibilities you can store, but one of those possibilities is zero, because we start counting with zero, and then we work our way up to one, 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 which is seven. So when you are counting in base 2, which is binary, first you have your 1's place, which is 2 to the power of 0. Then you have your 2's place, which is 2 to the power of 1. Your 4's place, which is 2 to the power of 2, and so on. Now this is the same thing as in base 10, except in base 10, you have your 1's place, which is 10 to the power of 0. You have your 10's place, which is 10 to the power of 1 and then hundredths, which is 10 to the power of 2, and then thousandths, and so on. It's just that we're working with base 2, and so instead of it being 10 to the power of whatever column that we're in, it is 2 to the power of whatever column that we're in. So here's what I want you to see. If you have three bits, then if you want to know what is the maximum value you can store in three bits, you simply say that two to the power of three is eight, and then eight minus one is seven, and therefore you know that with three bits you can store a maximum value of seven. If you have eight bits, then you would say that two to the power of eight is 256, which means you could store 256 total possibilities. One of those possibilities is zero, which means the maximum number that you can store is 255, which is two to the power of eight minus one. So notice that this table of two to the power of the number of column also lets you know what the place value for that column is. First we have the ones place, then two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on. So if you have sixteen different bits and you want to know what is the maximum value you can store, you just simply plug two to the power of sixteen into your calculator and subtract one. So let's take a look at this in action. If you have a numeric data type which is contained in two bytes, that is 16 bits, then the maximum number of possible values is two to the power of 16, which is 65,536, which means that if you started at zero, 
and started to count upward, the maximum value you could ever actually get to is one less than this, which is 65,535. Now, keep in mind that whenever you are working with um, different data types, whether it is C or any other programming language, there's always going to be a minimum and a maximum value, and that minimum and maximum value is always going to be determined by the number of bits that a given value is being stored in. So there are tables you can find for different programming languages that tell you, okay, if you're using a short int that is unsigned, you can go from 0 to 65,536, but you don't even need to use those tables if you simply understand how to figure this out yourself. So just remember, it is 2 to the power of the number of bits. That tells you how many total possible values you can store. And if you subtract 1 from that, you get the highest possible number you can store. So if you are limited to 16 bits of storage, then the maximum value you can store is 65,535, which means that every single binary digit you have available to you, all 16, have been set to 1, which means the hexadecimal value for that would be FFFF. This is another way of saying that with the value 65,535, we have used up all of the available 16 bits available for storage and we simply cannot hold a larger number. You may wonder why you need to know this, and the answer is very simple. Anytime you ever have a mathematical calculation in your program that exceeds the maximum value of a given data type, your program will fail. In later lessons, I will go into the specifics of what these limits actually are. Remember that the maximum values, as well as the size in bytes of each data type may differ between compilers. There are, however, certain requirements that all compilers must follow. We will explore that in greater detail later on.